Hello and welcome back. Okay, so we've got the basic ALU instructions back in nice and stably. We've got some different test code running here, but I uh, feel like I've got a bit of uh, momentum going, so let's get some more ALU operations in. So I'm going to move the ALU operation select back over to the place where we got some wires. The next one is going to be four. Now that is going to be add with carry. So the last one we implemented here was add, which just adds the left and right inputs together. So in many ways it's going to be very similar. Pass through right hand side directly. Then we're going to set the carry select to use previous carry. Okay, there's no carry flag set, so it's it's effectively doing the same as add. There's our carry. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Let's add that to the architecture. I'm going to use the opcode add C. Okay, that's done. We've added 12 more instruction permutations. Next, okay, increment. So that's five. It's an interesting one. So for increment, well, LHS and RHS, we want, well, we want RHS to be zero, which is what we've got because there's no line set yet. And LHS wants to be zero as well because we want to pass the value of LHS unimpeded. Of course, if every time we clock it at the moment, we're uh, getting a different instruction through. That is the fetch suppress. Okay, so then what we do for increment is we override the carry flag to be a one. Oh, hang on. Just realised I've got the add with carry wrong. That one should be one, not two. So the increment is where we set it to two. Okay. Let's so add increment instructions. Right. So now the next instruction is going to be increment with carry. Now it's not quite as immediately obvious for that. But with okay, so I've got the bits reversed for the carry select control. So now we're getting the result we expected, and that explains why we didn't see an error before when I had the inputs wrong for add with carry. That's all good now. So. There's the increment, the output is that plus one. So now we want increment with carry. So that's the same as add with carry apart from we are adding zero, we're generating zero in right hand side and we're just adding the carry flag as it currently exists. Ink with carry is actually one of those instructions where when you first see it, you kind of wonder what use it is. But um, but actually, over the years, used an instruction like this quite a lot. What you use it for is if you've got, say, a 16-bit quantity and you're adding an 8-bit quantity to it, then the ink with carry allows you to apply any carry over from the lower half into the upper half. Next up, subtract. That's where it gets interesting. Right, now subtract. Let's think about what we want. Right hand side, we want to invert it. And sub is seven. So it's four, five, six, seven. Inverting the right hand side is 
just the opposite of what we've done for the pass through. We put the lower two bits set. Okay, so we've got the inverted version there. Then we want to add one to form the two's complement. Okay, so yeah, we've subtracted a number from itself. That gets zero. Okay. So now we want to perform an operation called subtract with borrow. And once again, this is the extended form. So what the subtract with borrow is for is for extending a subtract operation because our base operations happen on 8-bit quantities and we want to be able to do them on larger quantities if need be. So if you think about how we do the subtraction, we perform a twos complement conversion on the right-hand parameter and then we add it to the left-hand parameter. So that's what we've got going on here. We form a not on the right hand input and then we add one by generating the, uh, the the constant carry flag but then if we were looking at the second half of that i.e the upper eight bits of a 16-bit quantity or indeed any later step then what we want to be doing is inverting the right hand input but rather than an increment the increment would already be happening in the lower half. So only if that produced an overflow operation do we want to carry a bit forward. So we just load in the pre-existing carry flag. Ah, I know what's going on with that bit now. Had me worried for a sec. It's hovering right over where those power cables are. It's just getting grounded out. Okay, um, sub with borrow done. And last but not least for arithmetic, we want a decrement. Select the decrement. So we've already got zero on the right hand side. Which isn't what we want. We actually want to turn that into a negative one. So we want to completely ignore the pre-existing inputs and just set every bit. Well, that's a decrement. Okay, so now we need to write some test code and, oh yeah, we need to do the, uh, the control. Let's initialize everything to zero. Actually, So on the third add of B to A, it will overflow. Actually, no, let's, um, let's move D to 100. And then do ink with carry B. So we're treating A and B as a 16-bit quantity and we're adding 100 repeatedly to A. Should be interesting. Okay, 
basically just throwing a random splattering of inks, decks, adds, um, I actually have actually been ink with carry for B. Right, so we have added 48 instructions today. It's essentially double the number of instruction permutations we have. That feels like we've got a bit of a momentum. Now we need to add that functionality to the processor architecture. Add with carry onwards the ones we have to implement. So we added add with carry, and that was before. Ink, that was in five. Ink with carry, and six. Space there. Sub subword borrow. This is going to be a lot of copy paste. So add with carry. Okay, there is a lot of replication here when we're uh, implementing ALU ops because we've basically just got two different types of these. One where we're passing the same set of inputs in as a left and right pair and one where we're doing a set of four because we've only got one operand. Get that onto the ROMs. Right, so first instruction was move a comma zero. Oh, I've still got fetch suppressed here. And still got the ALE operation hardwired. Okay, there's our move a comma whatever's next in memory, zero. Let me copy that into the other three. And then we have an ink A. Yes! Such a simple operation. But obviously, over here, when we were doing increments, we're just pulsing the line on a counter. And we were using these 193 counters from very early in this video series. Whereas over here, to do an increment A, we select register A onto the LHS bus. We set up all the rest of the inputs here via the diode matrix. Then when we clock it, you get a the contents of A, a zero and a, a hardwired one from the carry set into the addition unit. The one gets added to it and the result gets asserted to the bus and loaded back 
onto the A register. And here we've got the increment B is the first half of that is now happening down here. So when I hit the button to clock again, B will happen. So once again, we've got these back to back operations happening, even though the ALU operations take two cycles. So now we've got another set of increments. But now we've got decrements. That's beautiful. We've got D is being loaded with 100. Then we add D to A. And then we're doing an ink with carry to B. So we should be able to do this two times. And on the third time, we're going to see an increase in B if it's all working. Nice. So we're adding an 8-bit quantity to a pair of 8-bit registers that are working as a 16-bit value. And then we've hit the end of our instruction stream. It will loop back around in a moment. Oh, that's lovely. So we've added all the arithmetic operations there, all the arithmetic instructions. We've proved that the carry manipulations are working that allow us to do operations that are larger than 8 bits and that's going to be quite a big deal as we go on and try and make this process to do something interesting because there's only so much you can do in 8-bit quantities but the fact that we can combine multiple 8-bit operations to perform 16 or 24 or 32-bit operations or in theory as big as we want but uh, you 16-bit know, numbers are are practical and useful to us at the kind of scales we've got so that's where we'll do be doing a lot of our interesting tests okay I'm very happy with this next ALU we'll be tackling the logic stuff thanks for watching Goodbye.